Welcome to the ECG 5-Minute Consult, brought to you by myself, Sung Young Heva Lee, and co-author of ECG for First Responders, Dr. Bill Hayden. Let's get started on today's case. Over the next few publications of the ECG 5-Minute Consult, we will highlight 10 potentially lethal ECG patterns that may go unrecognized. Awareness is the first step in preventing cardiac disasters. You arrive on scene responding to an emergency call for a 61-year-old male sitting at home. On EMS arrival, the gentleman is alert and sitting in his chair. He complains of progressive shortness of breath and chest discomfort since last evening. One week ago, he received his second chemotherapy treatment for lung cancer. He has a temperature of 99 degrees Fahrenheit, with a blood pressure of 98 over 80, 28 respirations per minute, and a room air FiO2 of 88%. There is visible mild jugular distension and scattered rails on auscultation. Heart sounds are somewhat muffled. Heart rhythm is regular, but rapid without murmurs. His past medical history is significant for a 30-pack year history of cigarette smoking, a recent diagnosis of lung cancer, chronic hypertension, and osteoarthritis. His current list of medications include ibuprofen for joint pain and lisinopril for hypertension. Before interpreting his ECG, let's review our ECG primary survey approach. Using the ECG primary survey approach, first responders should address these four questions. One, the rate. Is the heart rate too fast or too slow, causing signs of shock? Two, Rhythm. Is the rhythm supraventricular or ventricular in origin? 3. ST segments. Are the ST segments consistent with an ST elevation myocardial infarction or a non ST elevation myocardial infarction? And 4. T waves. Are the T waves consistent with a STEMI or an NSTEMI? First, let's look at the rate. You can estimate most heart rates by applying the 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50 sequence. The peak R waves are slightly less than three large boxes apart, so we can estimate the rhythm is about 120 beats per minute. You can also estimate rhythms by counting the number of QRS complexes that occur during a six second time period and multiplying by 10, supporting our estimate of approximately 120 beats per minute. Cardiovascular shock might be suspected if his blood pressure was below 90 millimeters of mercury, but the patient also presents with alertness and no mention of diaphoresis. Next, let's look at the rhythm. The QRS intervals are narrow as defined by a width less than three small boxes. Because the QRS intervals are less than three small boxes, we can deduce that the rhythm is supraventricular in origin. Also notable, is the alternating heights of the QRS complexes, as seen clearly in lead two. Next, let's look at the ST segments. Overall, the leads are seen without consistent patterns of ST elevation or depression. Remember, changes in ST segments may reflect different cardiac conditions, for example, myocardial ischemia or infarction, pericarditis, or ventricular hypertrophy. Lastly, let's look at the T waves. The T waves are difficult to discern outside of V1, V2, and V3, but are not depressed below the isoelectric line, making cardiac ischemia less likely. With all this in mind, let's test your knowledge. Based on the initial impression of this patient's history, physical examination, and ECG, you suspect that this patient's acute symptoms are due to A. Pulmonary embolism B. STEMI C. Cardiac ischemia, D. Other, or E. Heart failure. The correct answer is D. Other. Let's talk about why. This patient is presenting with a condition known as cardiac tamponade. A potential complication of lung cancer is malignant pericardial effusion. Although the primary survey helps rule out the most acute life-threatening cardiac emergencies, this case represents a situation you do not wish to miss, cardiac tamponade. 
Cardiac tamponade results from accumulation of fluid in the pericardial sac that surrounds the heart. The fluid constricts effective filling and contraction of the ventricles, resulting in lowered blood pressure and backup of blood in the lungs, right atrium, and right ventricle, extending into the neck veins, causing visible jugular venous distension and possible dyspnea. Heart sounds can become muted due to the excess of pericardial fluid. These are classic findings of cardiac tamponade, the so-called Bex triad, distant heart sounds, JVD, and low blood pressure. Chest pain may be present as well due to pericardial inflammation slash irritation and myocardial ischemia from decreased cardiac output. Beck was a cardiothoracic surgeon at Case Western Reserve Hospital in Cleveland, Ohio. He first described these findings in 1935. These findings are present in only 10 to 40% of patients. While JVD is the most sensitive finding, absence of these signs does not exclude tamponade. Pulsus paradoxus may be an additional physical exam finding. Pulsus paradoxus is a drop in systolic blood pressure greater than 10 mm per mercury at inspiration. ECG findings in cardiac tamponade include the following, tachycardia, low voltage, and electrical alternance. Electrical alternance is a pattern of alternating QRS complex heights as seen in this case. This phenomena is due to the heart's pendulum motion as it swings beat to beat in the pericardial fluid. Tachycardia is present as this patient's heart rate is approximately 120 beats per minute. The relatively small size of the QRS complexes are due to the pericardial fluid dampening the effect on voltage as recorded by the ECG surface electrodes. Cardiac tamponade represents a true cardiac emergency. Needle aspiration or surgically creating a cardiac window to drain the fluid must be done emergently or the patient will deteriorate rapidly. Electrical alternance is present in only 5-10% to of cases of cardiac tamponade. While electrical alternance in pericardial fusion is a highly specific sign, meaning people who do not have this finding will likely test negative for effusion, its absence does not rule out tamponade. It may be found in other conditions such as rapid SVT. Let's do some review. So for treatment. Urgent removal of pericardial fluid by needle aspiration is a treatment for cardiac tamponade causing hemodynamic compromise. In the field, EMS should prepare for rapid transport to the appropriate facility. Apply high concentration oxygen. Check vital signs every 5 minutes. Monitor ECG for any signs of arrhythmias. Ensure the patient is kept warm and establish IV access. As always, always follow local protocols. This is an ECG diagnosis you must not miss. That's it for today's segment of 10 Deadly Signs on ECG, Abnormal Findings That Must Not Be Missed. Look out for cardiac tamponade with signs of Beck's triad, pulses paradoxus, electrical alternance, and remember the need for needle aspiration or a cardiac window. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the ECG 5-Minute Consult. For more information and practice on ECGs relevant for first responders, don't forget to check out our new second edition of ECG for First Responders. Printed in color, this book includes QR codes for navigation ease along with video explanations of practice ECG cases. Follow this Amazon link for more information. Until next time.